Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're brand new, then just welcome. Thanks for joining. My name is Katie and I'm a zero waste consultant in the Denver metro area of Colorado. So I basically just coach people in minimizing their overall excess waste, reducing their carbon footprint, and living more sustainably in general. And normally in these videos, I've been documenting my pregnancy journey and including some elements of sustainable living that we've incorporated into this pregnancy and preparing for the time afterward, having a baby. But in this video, there's not a whole lot of that because really all I'm showing you is just how we've packed our go bags. So these are the bags that are ready to go. They're waiting by the door for when baby decides to make his entrance. Not quite his entrance, but when he's getting ready and we're in labor and we need to go to the birth center and then hopefully there he can make his entrance or exit. I don't know. Anyway, I've got these bags ready and packed and I'm just going to show you what's in them so that if that is helpful to you, if you're possibly in the same boat right now, then there you go. You can have some ideas. So before jumping into the go bags, I'm just going to give you a really brief update. Uh, lately I've been combining my pregnancy updates into like two weeks at a time, so videos every other week, but as we get closer to our estimated due date or guest date, I just don't know when he's going to come. So we're currently over halfway through week 36, um, and in a couple days we'll hit that week 37 mark, which is super exciting because then... It is safe for him to come at any time. So um, our our due date is estimated at week 40, but it could really be any time between Friday and uh, the next three weeks or four weeks if he comes a little bit later. So anyway, I'm going to give you a brief update for just this 36th week of the pregnancy so far. Yesterday we had our first like weekly check-in. They're not quite weekly, they're about a week and a half spaced apart between now and whenever the baby comes, but we're just starting to go into the birth center a whole lot more frequently to check on his well-being and just make sure that everything is looking good. So yesterday we had that first appointment and it was really fun because we got to have an ultrasound and that was the first ultrasound we've had since the halfway mark of this pregnancy, so at about week 20. And he's so much bigger than what he was at that time, obviously, but it was really fun. We didn't get to see like too much with his facial features, but that's actually a really good thing because his head is down. So he is in the optimum birthing position, um, doing what he's supposed to do, and I'm really happy about that. So his head is down. That explains a lot of the pressure that I'm starting to feel in that like pelvic region, and I still, I've had to pee all the time throughout this whole pregnancy, but this past week has been like, oh my gosh, all the time. I have to pee. <laughs> so it's not really impacting the way that I walk. I don't know if that will get to that point. Some people, you know, describe like the pregnancy waddle, but I don't know. I've been uh, just continuing to exercise a bit, um, take as long of walks as I can endure. It's getting a little bit um, more tiring. And so I'm trying to keep my endurance up, but also not like overdo it. So walking a lot, doing some exercises that are like keeping him in that optimum position. Um, he probably won't move out of it now, but just to be safe, I'm doing that. And also trying to do some squats and things that are just like strengthening and toning um, the muscles that I'm going to be using a lot for birthing. So that's basically the update from this past week. I am sleeping a little bit better. I started putting a thicker pillow between my knees when I sleep at night on either side. And um, I think it's just taking some of the pressure off of my joints. And so that is helping and I'm sleeping a little bit better, which is nice. But I'll just give you guys the baby size update and then show you them up. And then we will jump into the bags. So according to the app, um, the Glow Nurture app that I use 
for just like weekly check-ins on the progress of my baby. The size for this week is about as big as a honeydew melon. And so it's like roughly 18.6 inches and about 5.8 pounds, which I think is fairly accurate. Um, the midwife yesterday who was, uh, you know, doing our appointment, she was like feeling around my belly and just trying to like feel his position and get a good idea for like where he's at and how big he might be before we even did the ultrasound, um, which was pretty cool. And so she's estimating that he's like between five and a half and six pounds right now. So that seems fairly accurate. It definitely feels like what I'm carrying around all the time. And uh, yeah, so about as big as a honeydew melon. And there you go. If you wanna see the little honeydew melon that I'm carrying, uh, I don't know which angle is quite best, but there you go. He's kind of, right now, he's like curved around on this side. So like his head is down and then his back and his butt are kind of like coming up over here, which means that his legs are curling up around the other side. And his little hands are like, um, I, I felt it yesterday. I knew I was like, I'm pretty sure that there's a hand or a fist right about here and that he's just kind of like poking me with it. And I was assuming his feet were more up here because I was feeling the kicks. And that's exactly how he was, like when we checked the ultrasound and we could see clear as day, this tiny little fist just like right here and just kind of <laughs> nudging at me. So it felt nice to have like a pretty good sense of where my baby is at inside of me. All right, that's it for this week's update, week 36 of the pregnancy, getting closer and closer to having our baby with us. And with that being said, we are just getting everything ready to go. So that includes packing some bags. Um, we are planning on going to our birth center. So for those of you who don't know, it's like a standalone center. It's not connected to a hospital and we just have a team of midwives and nurses there um, for our birth support. And then this particular birth center is like less than a mile away from a hospital. And so in the case that we did need to transfer some for some medical emergency reason, then it's a very quick transfer and we would have a lot of support with us. So Hopefully that doesn't happen. It's not what we're planning on. But um, that being said, we've packed our bags, assuming that we're just gonna be at the birth center. There are probably some things that you will not see that you may have in your bags if you're planning on having a hospital birth or if you've watched other videos with that because typically people stay at the hospital a lot longer. Like I think two to three days maybe. Um, whereas at the birth center, as long as everything is going smoothly and we're healthy and everything's all good, then we will leave the birth center and go home about six or so hours after the birth. And then we have like a 24 hour check-in with them. Um, we've got a 48 hour follow-up. We've got another follow-up like within the first two weeks. It's just a very like consistent, um, check-in routine that we've got with them so we'll have a lot of support but we don't need to be there for very long so we will have less packed than you may have in your own bags or would have seen for a hospital prepped birth we do have a couple things in our bags that I'll show you that are just in case of a transfer that would be good to have so you'll see that I think that's about it really so I'll show you what we've got in our bags. And then after that, I'll just come back here and uh, tell you a couple of the things that are not packed because we're still using them and they'll just kind of be thrown in last minute. This is also what I've got planned for being in labor, um, uh, kind of more or less. <laughs> Basically, this is a really long maternity shirt and um, I think it's just gonna be like really comfortable since it's super loose fitting. Um, it's long enough that I think I'll be able to just wear this a lot of the time while I'm laboring at the birth center. And then I've got my bathing suit top ready just because we are planning to have a water birth or at least laboring in the water for as long as possible. So I've got that prepped. Um, the shirt will probably be for laboring anytime that we're out of the water and I just wanna be more dry. And then I've also got my uh, like one set of Thinks 
Um, it, they're technically period underwear, but they're, you know, going to work perfectly for, like, both postpartum bleeding and then also, I'm thinking when my water breaks, assuming that it's going to break before we get to the birth center, um, then I might as well be wearing these on the way to the birth center. And then, of course, whatever pants seem to be fitting at the time. Um, we still have most likely a couple weeks to go, and it is October in Colorado, so you have no idea if it's going to be beautiful outside or snowing. So pants and what type of shoes I'm going to bring are going to be based on that day. But essentially this is what I've got prepared for really simple, comfortable laboring. So these are our three go bags, all packed, ready to go. And uh, I'm going to show you what's inside each one of them. But essentially we've got a bag full of things that like we might need during labor plus some stuff for Kevin and then this bag is the baby's diaper bag and so I've just kind of like stuffed that one with the things that we're gonna need after the birth for both the baby and me and then this final bag is a bag of snacks so let's go ahead and just get into each one of these so like I said, this is the bag that we've got prepared with some items that we might need to reference um, or use during labor. And then also just some essential care items for Kevin. So I will go ahead and start taking things out of it and just show you what's inside. So out of this front pocket, I just pulled out this little pile of things. Um, basically, this is in case of needing to transfer to the hospital. Um, hopefully that's not going to be the case, but you never know. So we may need a couple days worth of just like my prenatal vitamins and meds and things like that. So that'll be on hand. Some uh, earbuds for like if I need to just kind of get in the zone, plug them into my phone and listen to some relaxation tracks or affirmations that are recorded and things like that. Music. Um, this is a little journal that I've, you know, barely started, but it's basically like for our baby. And so just some letters in there and fun little things that I'm taking note of being pregnant. And then um, when he is born, I'll definitely continue reflecting about that and then writing in it as he grows. But I figured that might be a good thing to bring. And then this pile is super important to me at least for just like our referencing. So we've got two copies here of our birth plan. So that's basically just like our birth preferences and our goals. Um, this front page is just like what we want to achieve and the kind of like birth that we want to have, the affirmations that we're focusing on, especially I'm focusing on. Um, this is just like typed out ideas of the kind of environment that we want, keeping Kevin and I on the same page, like the kind of environment while we're at home and then in the car, and then once we get to the birth center, and then that golden hour, like right after birth, what we're hoping for. Um, this is just for Kevin, just like uh, as my birth companion, things that we've already talked about, but just writing it out, like what I specifically need from him during that time. And then just in case of a transfer to the hospital, we've got like a, a letter written to the hospital staff clearly outlining like our preferences for our birth. And then we've also got a bunch of um, specific preferences that I basically copied from our hypnobirthing workbook and then just kind of like uh, some of it I crossed out if I didn't think it really applied to us or it didn't matter to us very much. So this is an essential, like, preference plan for a hospital birth, and then just in case there were a need for a C-section, we also have some preferences for that procedure. If possible, of course, like, you know, barring any super medical emergency type stuff, um, we would want to follow those preferences as closely as possible. And then this is the hypnobirthing workbook that we got with our course and with the actual book um, that we read through. But in this, w there were some really helpful sections that I thought I should just like mark for specifically for Kevin or for our doula um, if they need ideas during that supporting the labor portion. So affirmations are marked. Um, 
just like things that Kevin can definitely remind me of during labor. I think that's going to be really important for me, especially being such a big like words person. And then there's a reminder on like the breathing techniques. So just calm breathing, surge breathing, um, which is what you do like during contractions or surges. And then when it's time to actually, oh, the phone's going off. When it's time to actually breathe the baby down, um, like in that birthing process, that type of breathing will come in really helpful. And then this is, um, there's several pages on like relaxation techniques. Um, this is the one in particular that I found really helpful. So I just marked that one and Kevin can walk me through it or our doula could. And then specifically for Kevin, I loved that they included this section for the birth companion and partner. Um, there's ideas on like what to do during labor and then what to say during labor. So, you know, there's ideas for Kevin like as the labor starting, um, the arrival, as labor progresses, birthing phase, um, what to do during that bonding time, and then like during labor what he could say at any time. These are always encouraging things to hear. Um, what he could say in between surges, during surges, and then during that birthing portion. So, um, Kevin was also pretty happy about this reference guide, so I don't know if we'll use it in the moment, but I figured it would be nice to have it all planned out and easy to access. This is an awesome guide that my friend created for her own birth, and obviously since she's not using it right now, um, she was willing to pass that on to me, so she's just got some great like um, diagrams and things that she put together that, again, go with that breathing guide. So for surge breathing, calm breathing, and birth breathing. Um, there were some anchors and relaxation cues that we learned during our hypnobirthing classes, and then just some like encouragement and things like that. So um, I'm gonna bring it. I think it might be nice to have on hand as well, and I appreciate she's letting me borrow it. <laughs> so, and then finally we've just got this notebook that's like um, full of some notes and things that we've been taking during different birth classes and Kevin felt like it might be a good idea to have it on hand as well, plus if we just need some paper, something to write on, then we've got that. So all of this is what is going to go back inside of that front pocket. Alright, and all of this is just what came out of this top pocket. So basically, there's just some uh, toiletries that I'm keeping at the bottom of the bag because we most likely won't need that until um, after the birth, but you know, basic like travel size shampoo, conditioner, soap um, for taking a shower and then some like toothpaste and we'll put our toothbrushes in it right at the very end. Um, I think, what else? Oh, I brought our like baby nail clippers kit just in case. I'm not really sure if that's something that we'll need, but it was on our recommended list of things to pack. So I brought that just in case. And then um, also have some herbal perennial spray just for, you know, healing and caring for myself postpartum. So, uh, you know, like I said earlier, we're not gonna be at the birth center very long at all, but, um, just in case we had to transfer to a hospital or, I don't know, if we need it, it's there. Then there's just like a change of clothes for Kevin. So, got some pants and shirts and like a nice sweater and everything. And then his swim trunks, just in case he wanted to come into the tub while I'm like in labor and like the birthing process and everything. So, he's got those just in case. Um, and then lastly, We've got this bath pillow um, just because it was recommended to me by like a friend and um, the midwives and the doula that just like if I am planning on spending most of my labor in the tub or having a full water birth, then it can get uncomfortable. Like I might need something to support my back and my neck or my hands and my knees, like depending on what position I'm in. So. We've got a bath pillow now, and uh, there's just like some suction cups on the back to help it stay in place. And then, I don't know, it might be really nice to have anyway. We'll make a lot of use out of it 
after the birth because if I'm taking some like Epsom salt baths and things like that during the healing process, that could be really nice. All right, and then in this bag, so like I said earlier, this is our diaper bag. So it just made sense to put the things that we're gonna need for both baby and then myself into it after the birth. So for myself, uh, keeping it super simple, but just bringing like a cozy pair of sweatpants. Um, we are supposed to be giving birth at the end of October um, and it's Colorado, so who knows what the weather will be like, but I figured sweatpants are gonna be stretchy and cozy and that'll be comfortable anyway. Um, pair of socks. This is a nice long sleeve shirt that um, my friend let me borrow. It's got like easy access flaps for nursing, so that'll come in really handy. And then, as well as the easy access nursing shirt, I've got this sports bra that's also like a nursing bra. So you're able to unclip this here and then that folds down so that you can easily nurse your baby. So I've brought a couple of those. Um, and then in case we needed to use it or even wanted to be shown like <laughs> more technique from the lactation consultant that we'll talk with before leaving the birth center, we have this Haka pump. Um, so it's just like, you know, handheld, uh, easily portable. You can use it to pump or you can use it to just like, you know, put on one breast while you're nursing with the other breast in case like there's leaking or anything which I don't think will be happening at all during that first 24 hour period uh even up to like 72 hours I think because that is when my milk will change and really come in whereas before that it's just like colostrum which is a totally different consistency but anyway I don't know we're bringing it just in case and then a couple pairs of the thinks panties like I showed you earlier. Um, I really don't know how much liquid to expect to be coming out of me and how much bleeding there's going to be so I figured bringing three of these is like safe. Um, so we'll see but that's what I plan on using throughout this whole postpartum period um, and then also they're just what I use for my own period. That's like my self-care stuff. Oh and then a robe for afterwards if I want that and if it'll be comfortable. I don't know. <laughs> That's my stuff. And then the most exciting and fun part of this bag is all the baby stuff. If you've been following my videos, you know that we are trying to live as sustainably as possible and we are planning on cloth diapering. But that being said, at the very beginning, we are going to start with some disposable diapers. Um, unfortunately, it's not like what we ultimately wanted to do but it did kind of seem like I don't know there this is our first baby it's gonna be a big transition so we're trying to just take one huge adjustment at a time so we're gonna start with like some newborn sized disposable diapers um, and someone gave us these wipes but then we are definitely transitioning as soon as we can to cloth diapering and also learning more about EC which I've mentioned before the elimination communication I'll make other videos on that eventually but this is what we're starting with um, I am bringing a nursing cover although I don't really plan to use it while at the birth center but I don't know just in case we need it or we're I don't know <laughs> I just have it to be prepared I guess um, and then his tiny adorable little clothes to come home in. So I brought a couple sizes just in case, depending on like how big or small he is. So these I think are just going to keep his little feet warm if they'll even fit him, but they're super cute. Um, and then we've got a little hat for him. And then I'm hoping he can fit this outfit because I would really love if we could just bring him home in this and take a picture while at the birth center and everything just with him being our rainbow baby um this was from a friend and so you know just tiny little miracle really cute so we've got like this onesie and then some pants that have some clouds on it so it kind of just goes with it um and then in case he doesn't fit that i've also brought like just a bigger onesie so 
we'll see which one he fits. But that's the plan. And then of course, with it being in October, we also have some various blankets. So we've got, oh, <laughs> sorry about that. My washing machine started making a really weird noise. But anyway, we've got a variety of blankets for him. So we have another like rainbow themed blanket um, that's gonna be really cute once we like spread it all out and hopefully, you know, we could have him wearing his rainbow outfit and then spread out this blanket and just like take a cute picture. So that's kind of really the only purpose of this. And it's nice and thin if he only needs a thin blanket. But to swaddle him, we've, we've also got like this little blanket that's more of a square shape when you unfold it so it's easy to swaddle. And then we've got a really thick cozy blanket. Um, I'm guessing we're gonna need to use this for sure to wrap him up and uh, keep him warm as we go home. So yeah, that is the baby stuff that we've got ready for him and some self-care stuff for me and that's all that is going in this diaper bag for right now. This is our final bag which basically just has some snacks in it. So I took out a couple of what we've got in here and then there's still just like some at the bottom but we basically brought a variety of um, you know mixed nuts and fruit um, kind of like a trail mix that'll be easy to snack on. These are snacks for both Kevin and I while we're there, but definitely like a lot for me during labor. And I'm trying to think of like things that are easy to eat, kind of like what you would eat when you're working out. So we've also got like a few um, Lara bars and then these type of squeezy pouches, which I mean, again, like so much of this, like I never buy because of all the packaging and stuff. Um, these we would normally get in bulk with our own bags from the bulk bin, but because of COVID right now, they're all pre-packaged anyway. But in labor, I have heard that these are just really great to have on hand. And especially with these like pouches, you know, a quick, easy to gulp down applesauce or chia squeeze, like it'll give you that boost of energy and really easy to consume right away. So we've got several of those and then just some basic like crackers. I know at the birth center, they've also got a variety of, um, you know, like peanut butter and other types of crackers and snacks. Um, they've got some Gatorade and juices and things. We're just gonna bring our own water bottles and plan to just mainly drink water the whole time. So that's kind of the variety of what we've got in this bag and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I'll keep you guys posted if this is even necessary or helpful, but that's what I've heard recommended. I hope that was helpful to you. Um, I am so excited to just have these bags ready to go and just like waiting by the door now. So really quickly, I'm going to tell you a few things that are not in those bags, but we'll either grab them last minute or they're already in the car or something like that. Um, this is the list that we've based everything off of and um, it's just like a really thorough list that came from our birthing team um, from our doula support so some of the things didn't totally apply we decided we didn't need them but basically it has like everything I showed you on that list or I mean in those bags and then the couple things we're gonna grab um, you know and just like throw into the bags when we're ready to go of course like our toothbrushes and maybe chapstick or something like that. Things that we're still using all the way up until that day, but the rest of the toiletries are packed like you saw. So we'll throw those into the bags when we're ready. Um, having like both of our IDs, insurance cards, stuff like that. Uh, we'll probably just grab my purse or something. And then uh, along with that, we're gonna have both of our phones and cell phone chargers because that will come in really handy when it comes to just like either timing the surges, um, another word like for contractions, uh, the relaxation tracks and recorded like affirmations, calming music, all those things that came in really handy from our hypnobirthing course. Um, we've got those on our phones and they also have Bluetooth speakers at the birthing center, so we'll be able to connect and play that while we're in the room. We're gonna bring a couple of our own pillows. Um, it could be helpful to have those in the car and then also just like at the birth center if we need more pillows. So we'll probably each bring our own. And then, 
Oh, we'll grab our water bottles. So I've got the one that I use pretty much every day. Kevin will grab his, um, and then we'll just continue to refill those water bottles once we're at the birth center. And if we need anything else, they've got other things like, you know, Gatorade or juice or something like that. But most likely we're just gonna stick to water. Oh, this one is totally optional, but I, I like the idea of it, kind of having like a focal point. So something for visualization or just focusing. So I've chosen to create some affirmation cards. So that's something that I'm working on. I have my affirmations written out in a few places. Like I've got the ones that I showed you in our birth plan. Uh, I've got some that have just been written out and I keep by my bed and I go through them each day. But I think I would like to have a few like bigger cards with really powerful affirmations and maybe something to like visualize along with it and just keep that encouragement in front of my eyes while I'm in labor and I don't know it could be helpful to like place those things around the room. So I'm gonna finish those up and then throw them in the bag. Oh yeah, we're gonna bring some essential oil. So we've got some calming like lavender essential oil and they have diffusers at the birth center. So we'll just bring like a little bottle of that. And then I think that's basically it. A couple other like random things, but yeah, that is it. It feels like we're getting ready for this like giant trip or something, um, but yeah, it's it's gonna be the trip of a lifetime. We won't come back the same. And one thing we did this past weekend was get the car seat uh, installed in my car. And there's a base, cause it's one of those like that clicks into the base. So we have a base installed in both my car and Kevin's. Um, and then the car seat itself is just currently in my car because that is what we're planning to go to the birth center with. So it's all ready to go in there. And um, I think that's really it, you guys. I'm excited and uh, just feeling really prepared and more and more confident as time goes on. So I hope this was helpful to you. If you have any ideas or thoughts, feel free to leave them in the comments. Um, this is our first time through, so there may have been things that we like overpacked or didn't need or something like that, but I would love to hear your experiences too if you would like to share them. Feel free to comment or message me. You can find me on Instagram, which I've got linked below, and then, uh, you know, just all the other resources that I typically offer you can find on my website or my Patreon. Those are all linked below, and... I think that's about it for this week. So I'll continue making videos for as long as possible. And then once the baby is here, of course there will be a break for a bit, but I'll be back and I'll be able to show you just our newest little family member and um, keep going with this new adventure. I hope you guys have a great rest of your week and I will talk to you soon.